Hello everybody, my name is Kyle, and uh, I have one question for you. How many of you have a younger brother or sister around the age of 10 or 13 that has social media? All right, which brings me, uh, then you must know about the dangers that lurk or that are present within social media. Uh, which brings me to my main claim that exposure to social media at a young age provides negative effects. Um, by through these supporting claims, one, social media in turn leads to a greater risk of cyberbullying. Two, false identity or possi possibility of communicating with strangers um, is present. Number three, Early exposure to sexual content found in social media can lead to an increased practice of high-risk sex. And four, the staying power of social media. Which brings me back to my first point. Social media in turn leads to a greater risk of cyberbullying. Uh, more than half of the children use social media by the age of 10. And social media such as Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, provide a uh, age limit of 13 years old, which is insuffi insufficient through, uh, because of the things that are present that lurk within uh, social media platforms. So cyberbullying grows in line with phone usage, which many adolescents or millennials nowadays possess a phone for, say, like contacting your parents in case of an emergency. So a research sponsored by OpenNet contained results that 46% of heavy phone users experience cyberbullying. Now, the definition of a heavy phone user is somebody who sends about 60 text messages per day. Now, that may not be surprising to many of us nowadays because it's, it's normal. So 88% of cyber bullies have admitted that they were cyber bullied themselves, which leads to a reoccurring theme of uh, the continuation of cyber bullying because it just, it's getting passed on for the next person and continues from there. And through the victimization of young people online, this is related to uh, high profile suicides or some even experience severe, severe depression uh, linked to these social uh, platforms. An example of this would be ask.fm. Are any of you aware of, uh, aware of ask.fm? Well anyways, it is a, it's a form of social networking where one creates an account and then other, other people, anonymous people can ask questions to that user uh, they can, they can list their name or they can be anonymous, but then it has been used uh, to slander and use term, derogatory terms uh, for any user. So in the past year, nine suicides were linked to this, cyber, to this uh, social networking platform. Uh, they experienced cyber abuse, which led to suicidal uh, tendencies. Um, <coughs> uh, proceeding to my next uh, supporting claim, False identity or the possibility of communicating with strangers. Uh, I'm pretty sure many of you are uh, have heard of Catfish, right? The show Catfish? Well, this is similar to that. Children already struggle to just or evaluate the intentions of somebody. So imagine them trying to judge the qualities of a person through social media. And let's say children become acquainted with someone they think they know they have the tendency to lead to oversharing of personal information such as your address, your parents' occupation, which can, in some cases, it can lead to kidnapping or even, in worst cases, rape. Uh, an example of this would be in online dating sites such as Tinder. Uh, within the past two years, crimes linked to Tinder have increased sevenfold. Users are vulnerable to sex extortion. More than 400 offenses with connections to users on that app were reported to the police. So could you imagine the amount of people who were, who didn't report it to the police that still remain on the app? So the present is still danger for anyone that uses Tinder, a social networking platform. Uh, supporting plan number three, early exposure to sexual content results in increased practice of high risk sex. Uh, the exposure of uh, pornography in Twitter is not prohibited, it's still allowed. Um, and once it is retweeted, it is available for anyone who follows that user to see that uh, pornography that has been retweeted or shared. Um, according to a study conducted by Dr. Jennings Bryant, 
and 40%, 66% of boys and 40% of girls admitted to wanting to practice some of the sexual acts they were exposed to in the media. So children who have sex by the age of 13 are likely to have multiple partners, abuse, alcohol, or even drugs. Uh, this in turn could increase the risk of the spread of STDs and unwanted pregnancies to children at a young age. Finally, the staying power of social media. Whatever is posted on social media remains. Even if you think you delete it, the capabilities on iPhones such as screenshotting or laptops allows us to keep those memories even if we think that someone, or if we, if we think we have deleted it. And for that reason, or now, you, now that you are more aware of these present dangers in social media, you can hopefully lead children away from these dangers. Thank you. Well, I don't know. Did you have the outline yeah, that I, I just gave to somebody else? Give it to him. That's that's where we were. That's give it to him. You go. You're gonna give me one later. The uh, proposition's clear. It's organized in the body of the speech pretty clearly. You signpost those points. There's also a preview at the beginning of the speech that's pretty solid. Uh, I'm not sure that there's a lot of... Obviously, cyberbullying can't occur unless some kind of social media is involved, so there's kind of, uh, by necessity, not much argument there. But the idea that young people uh, who have access to this technology are more likely to get cyberbullied, that I think there's probably some argument about. And you've got a little bit of data about... Uh, you know, the, the uh, age at which people are using the social media. You say half of the people using the one site are age 16, excuse me, age 10, and that the rules for these sites are 13. Um, I didn't see any demonstration that the cyberbullying that's taking place is at those younger ages. That's a little bit problematic. Um, later on, for instance, when you're talking about uh, crimes, that are linked to Tinder. I'm not exactly sure that 10-year-olds and 13-year-olds are using Tinder. Maybe they are. I, I don't know. I'm not on Tinder. Uh, it doesn't seem like they're probably looking, you know, my understanding of the app is that it's not really designed for people to use that way. But maybe they do. I, I, I don't know. That would be one of those things that uh, if you're going to connect this to young people's access, then the data really ought to follow from young people. Uh, the the information that you have about uh, how much people use the phone, the number of text messages that they send, you know, that sort of stuff, that I think does give us some sense that uh, this is, you know, in this particular group, they're active users, uh, at least of some kind of social media, not necessarily the social medias that you're talking about. Ask. FM, I guess it is. Uh, you, it's a platform that's been associated with a number of suicides. This is another one where some data needs to be uh, tied into this. Where, first of all, the number of suicides that are connected there. I didn't get a source citation on that, and uh, that they were suicides of people who were young. Uh, that I didn't get either. And that's your argument: is that it's the early access to the social media that's causing these problems. So that's the evidence that we need to see on that particular point. Uh, the evidence on uh, sexual activity was a little bit more specific on the, the age groups. You mentioned that kids, boys who'd seen it, 66% of them wanted to engage in the behaviors, 40% of the girls who saw it wanted to engage in the behaviors that they saw. And then there's a link to um, drugs and alcohol and uh, you know, pregnancy and all those kinds of things. So I think you've got a good piece of information there. It just is, it feels a little thin. I think you need some other information on most of these points. And I think that's the problem with most of the argument. It's not that you, you don't have a good argument here. It's not that it's clear. It's that the proof on it is sometimes a little bit thinner than it needs to be. There's usually one good piece of evidence on each point, and there needs to be maybe a little bit more on each of the points. All right, thank you.